Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us this evening for Lifetime Adoption's Q&A question and answer session. We're so happy that you are all here with us this evening, and we're excited to have our speakers with us to answer all the questions that are on your minds tonight. If you are new to Lifetime, um, or maybe haven't applied yet, just remember our free application is available online at lifetimeadoption.com. The specific uh, direct link to get to the free application online is lifetimeadoption.com slash apply, A-P-P-L-Y. Um, if you're joining us in the webinar format online, Libby just popped up a link so that you can fill that out while you're listening to our webinar tonight. Um, we encourage your participation this evening. Libby's going to share a little bit more about that with you in just a moment. And I also wanted to share with you how you can get in the loop with us on Facebook. If you're not already part of the group on Facebook, you can find us very easily by going to facebook.com slash open.adoption. That's facebook.com slash open.adoption. As you may know, if you have um, <coughs> already started to get to know us, we have an answer line at 1-800-923-6784. That's 1-800-923-6784. We um, want to make sure that you have access to all of the best information and answers to your questions. And sometimes you may have questions that are more specifically related to your circumstances. And so we welcome you to call us or reach out to us through Facebook or on the website or however you'd like to and share a little bit about what's been going on with you and let us know how we can help and what questions you may have. Um, if you don't already have a primary coordinator point of contact, we will assign you to someone so that you'll have a person that you can you know that you can call and ask for or email directly. So again, the, the website is lifetimeadoption.com and our application is free on there. Um, there is no obligation to filling out our op application. Basically, it's an opportunity for us to be able to get to know you and for you to share a little bit about what's on your heart as you explore adoption. And everyone starts at a, you know, a different place. You know, maybe they fill it out after already pursuing adoption um, locally for a couple of years and now they want to expand. Or maybe it's your first time reaching out. We'd love to hear from you. And we know tonight is a, a mixed audience, and so we welcome all of our lifetime families and families who are currently exploring adoption with us. Libby, thank you for being here as a co-host as well. <laughs> well, and I also want to make sure that we don't overlook. We have kind of a, a, a big panel of lifetime hosts for you tonight, um, because we're also joined by Lifetime's director, Heather Featherston. And part of the reason I invited so many people here is because what we notice about these adoption Q&As is that sometimes you have questions that maybe are more specific to you and your adoption future or your story or your circumstances. And we don't always get a, an opportunity to type directly with you about those things that maybe don't apply to the mass majority who are attending or maybe that are sort of sensitive or we don't necessarily want to address in front of everyone else. So mm -hmm. what's really cool about tonight is that um, we get to juggle, so hopefully we'll get an opportunity to not only address as many questions as possible with our guest speaker tonight, um, Marty Caldwell, but also that you will get some answers before you leave this call, even if you don't hear them announced on tonight's broadcast. So um, I want to take an opportunity just to introduce our additional co-host, Heather, um, and then she will begin taking your questions. So remember, that tonight is about, it's a Q&A. We want to keep this casual. We do have some photos that we can show as Marty uncovers when she's answering your questions. She obviously will tap into her personal experience um, in her decades of work in adoption, but also in her personal story that's knitted together by adoption. So if you're online, you'll be able to see those. And then um, make sure you check that questions box on your screen, because that's where you can chime in with your questions or comments. So Heather, I want to thank you for being here tonight, because I think that you also bring just a, an interesting perspective through your many years with Lifetime as well. And we don't often get to hear from you on some of these Q&As. So it's really great to have you here, too. Thank you, Libby. Thank you, Kim. Thank you both for organizing this. And I'm excited to have, uh, to have Marty Caldwell joining us tonight. Um, as many of you probably know or can see on the screen if you're online, she is the founder of Lifetime Adoption Center. She is a certified open adoption practitioner. She is an award-winning author um, 
an adoption expert, and probably most importantly, she is an, an adoptive mom. So, um, Marty, welcome, and I'm so glad to have you here tonight. Well, thank you so much, and I'm excited to join all of you together. I hear your voices all the time and get together with a few of you in person when I can, <laughs> and uh, it's just nice to have the whole panel together. I'm looking forward to all the, the questions that they have out there, and I'm hoping people will We'll ask away, and we can get to as Definitely. many as possible. Definitely. Now, before we get started, I want to just kind of kick it off. For, for those who may not know, it is um, National Adoption Awareness Month. Every November is National Adoption Awareness Month. And Marty, can you just share a little bit of information that, that you have on, on, on what that is or, or what its purpose is or, or what we do in well, November? You know what? Do, not, uh, National Adoption Awareness Month is always in November, and it really started out many, many years ago about just being an awareness to adoption and, and a lot of waiting children, but it has, has evolved into awareness about adoption overall. You know, we have uh, children that are medically fragile. We have children that are maybe two years old or four years old. We actually have uh, sibling groups, and we have newborns. And we just want to be able to bring awareness to adoption the way it looks like uh, in the um, you know in this this year and not what it did 25 years ago or so. So mm -hmm. in Adoption Awareness Month, we usually talk about families and have families share stories to, uh, and birth moms share about what adoption means to them and bring awareness to it so people remember that adoption is an option when they're drilling their families and when birth moms and when women are looking for options to an unplanned pregnancy or an inability to parent their children at this point in their life and they're looking for a permanent, loving, adoptive parents, uh, open adoption, um, and a National Adoption Awareness Month kind of goes hand in hand. So I hope that kind of answers the question there. Definitely, definitely. And I, I do know that um, if, you, if you follow um, any adoption groups or, or even friends who have adopted or are adopting on Facebook, you will see in November a lot of adoptions finalized and, and they post pictures because the, the courts do try to also acknowledge that by trying to get a lot of adoptions completed because um, it is a month, like I say, we, we recognize and, and um, and celebrate that. So great. Well, Marty, I have some questions coming in here, so I'm just going to kick us right off. Okay, let's go. Um, my husband and I are having a hard time deciding if we're ready to start adoption. We think it's great, but we're nervous about some of the things we hear. Uh, you know, that's, that's a big, broad question. It really depends <laughs> on, it sounds like you're just starting out right now, and you're probably hearing the pros and the cons. And with anything else, whether it's infertility or whether it's uh, parenting, uh, stepchildren, you're going to hear pros and cons and everything. What I encourage people to do is to, uh, when I hear a question very much based like that, Heather, is that I, I like to address that the more education, the more they can learn, the better, because mm -hmm. every adoption is different. And I, and I know that, um, Kim, you can pipe in on this, too, that you've heard a lot of stories also. But um, mm -hmm. people, when they first come into adoption, have a lot of fears, and just like anything else. When I, when I started learning to drive a car, if I had listened to the first few people that said anything, I would have never been driving at this age anyway, because <laughs> I, I would have been scared to death, you know. And, and also, you have to, uh, some of the things that may not have been brought up about infertility, if you're still dealing with infertility, uh, that might be a, another area that you're not really sure of, too. But mm -hmm. get more information about uh, adoption and the true adoption, and that's one thing that we really we you know, proud ourselves with is that uh, through lifetime adoption, we really try to give up as much information as possible to help you make that right decision because you want to speak to people that have adopted just recently, mm -hmm. and you also want to know yourself too is, is that um, you're going to have your good days, you're going to have the days that aren't as good, and that's just like anything else from work to making a pie. <laughs> that's you know? right. And so um, you're going to have the, really, the, the times that are more challenging than others, but it's all worth it in the end if you don't give up. Yeah. And Marty, I've, I know I've found when I've talked to families, some of the some of the most common fears when they when they have heard things that make them nervous and scared is they're often afraid of of the birth of the perception that the birth mother can come back at any time and right. and take her take her child back. And that's what the media, you know, it's interesting. That's what Hollywood really tries to build up. And when we see these stories, they're getting a little bitter about that now. But that was the biggest fear before was you know. Uh, the fear of a child, a birth mom coming back. And I used to hear that more so in the past than I do now, is, you know, how do you know the birth mom is not going to come back and take the baby? Well, we're adopting in the United States. 
Uh, we're adopting through legal channels. We're doing everything by the books. And that's why we know that these are the adoptions that are going to go through that are going to be healthy and safe adoptions. And um, you're always going to hear horror stories because there are going to be people that are going to do things in other states or different countries. And they're going to do things that they shouldn't be doing also. And then what happens, the media grabs a few pieces of information regarding that and it blows it out and scares everybody away. Mm -hmm. And I would say that if, um, again, you know, it, and you can see the media does this with all different areas of, um, of uh, you know, the, uh, of the world. Yeah, any, any issue. Whether any it's issue. weather, you know, I get phone Definitely. calls. Definitely. There's, there's, a, there's a storm down in Southern California. I'm in Northern California. They think I'm getting blown <laughs> away. You know, so it's, uh, it, it happens that way too. So I really think yeah. that uh, the more information you have, the more knowledge you have, the better decision, but you've right. got to come to a piece about it. And I just found with anything, and I'll give you an example. This is really not even close to it, but I have a, a water heater that's going out, and I had to go out and study my water heaters. Well, I've never wanted to. That's the last thing I want to do is worry about it, but I got a lot of information. I got ratings. I talked to other, other people that had water heaters. What did you like about it? Oh, you want to extend warranty on it? You want something with metal on it? You don't want something with plastic on it? You want something that's going to be uh, heat up for my needs? And the more information I got, the better I felt. So when I was able to go to my plumber and say, this is what I want, and I think this is where I want to buy it, he was able to come back and say, well, I can get this other one here. It has more of a warranty, and I can get it to you for $200 less money. Because I had already gone to him and said, this is what I wanted, and I had enough information that just going and saying, what am I supposed to do? And so I had more confidence, and that's what I'm coming back to, is that we want the confidence by the knowledge. And you know, Marty, I'm glad you said that about, uh, about the water heater, because what it does is it gives you not only more confidence in your decision, but it helps you start to see that the first guy you called who said, hey, I got a great deal on plastic water heaters, yeah, you know why he had a great deal on plastic water heaters, because you know that's what you don't want. So, right. so for instance, in a, taking that example to adoption, you know, for families who may be really concerned about um, a disrupted situation, one where the child may have to, you know, leave your home, you know, going through fost adopt is probably not the best option for you because those have a very an increased rate of being disrupted because you you're working as a foster parent in the hopes of adopting. And so, I've been there before. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So the more you know, it, it just helps you kind of learn and discover the direction you want to go. Um, the picture you see on your screen right now is actually of Marty with a birth mother. And, and one of the reasons that I love sharing this is because a lot of people, when they're just starting out in adoption, they don't know what to expect with a birth mother. They're afraid, you know, she may have, you know, tattoos all over herself, she may have, you know, be chain smoking, she may, um, you know, she may look like someone that you don't necessarily want to associate with for lunch, let alone have an ongoing relationship while your child is growing up. So coming to these webinars and hearing, um, I know last night we heard from a birth mother, hearing from birth mothers, seeing photos like this, you really can start to understand, you know what? They're, they're really just like you or me. And yeah, that's exactly. And it's interesting, too, is because we've got adopted parents with tattoos and that have been able mm -hmm. to relate to birth moms with tattoos. And yeah. I've had birth moms stay in my home, but it's just nice. They, birth moms want to know what you guys look like. Definitely. And, and adopted parents want to know what birth moms look like. It's like we're Martians, and we want to know what they look like from Mars and which ones look <laughs> like from Venus, you know. And are we close? Are we compatible? Do we both smile? And... It, there is some peace that comes over um, when you have that, when you get to know that other person, too, uh, with that. And I think that's why the more contact you can have, especially at the very beginning when you're getting to know your birth mother, the more peace you're both going to have about the adoption process and the less disruption you're going to have, too. And I think that's really important. And then deciding what's going to be the best afterwards. And some birth moms, like in my own case, um, I've got uh, actually in, in both my adoptions, um, one that has no contact at all anymore, which is really sad for me, and the other one that has limited contact, which still is sad because my child would like to have more contact and I would like them to have more contact. So, you know, it's a really difficult situation to be in, but I think the more knowledge you have, the better decisions you can make. And I, I keep going back to that because it's, it's really important. Yeah. And and we're sharing right now. We it just came up. We're sharing um, some pictures of Marty with um, with her her two little ones, and um, the one on her left is is her son, um, who is definitely not that little anymore. He is uh, he was probably he, yeah he's he's six three, 
and 26 years old, 27? 27, just turned 27 years old, <laughs> just, just, just last month. And um, it, it is, uh, it, it's awesome that Marty that you are so open in, in, in sharing those details because it, it helps I think it helps all of us see that you know definitely the the wisdom you share comes from comes from experience. And, well, and I um, think also I, I had a lot of ignorance at the very beginning because I really wanted you know like a lot of people have heard me say at the very beginning when I started out I really wanted someone just to drop the baby off in a, a beautiful basket on my doorstep, ring the doorbell and I would swoop the baby twirl around, and this is my child, and we start out life beautifully, never mm -hmm. thinking about my child's history, heritage, medical, um, where they get their talents from, are they more tactile or more musical inclined, and once I started thinking beyond me and realizing this child's got a history, a family history, just like your spouse does, you wouldn't say, oh, I don't want to hear about your family history. I don't want to hear about your information, your medical information. You want to know that as you get to know somebody. And that's what's really nice about um, open adoption is you're able to get that information. But once I realized that, then I started realizing that open adoption really was very, very important and very a key important because if I hadn't gathered the information I did early on, I would have had that information even to this day. Right. Um, and if the birth mother had disappeared or, God forbid, something happened to her that I couldn't get that information, where would yeah. we be? And that's really difficult. That would be really hard for me to go to my child and say, you know what, I was selfish back then. I didn't get that information. I didn't think it was important. I was fearful. I was working out of fear. And I didn't get this information. I'm so sorry. I could just yeah. I could see that look on my child's face and believe me, I would not want that. <laughs> you know, Marty, that, that kind of... I was, I'm sorry, Heather, Go I was going to... This is Libby here. Because um, we do have some questions coming in about, about that very fact, a misunderstanding mm -hmm. about what it means to have that connection open and and certainly one of the things that I love to share when we have adoption stories is that every story is so unique but that essentially when you know your child's birth history and, and where your child came from and that woman knows where her child's going that that's an open adoption and then all of the other areas sort of this gray customizable very personal between the people involved right, right. Um, thing but we have a lot of questions right now about that's my thing is I hear that it's easier to disrupt an open adoption than international adoption. And so I think, well, but I really want to adopt a healthy child. So, you know, they're having a hard time weighing out the risks of I hear international you know, is easier. International, I hear I yeah, international. Let me tell you, here. international, I, I, I support international, you know, on my, my adoption radio show and, and in my writings I support it. But let me share with you as an adoptive parent, too unless you're really, really called to adopt internationally, and that means you're willing to take a child with any medical risk at all, because you can get a, a medical record that could be true, and it could be false. It could be in mm -hmm. another language that cannot be translated, and it could mm -hmm. be actually, a, a, it could have been um, accidentally or purposely um, substituted mm -hmm. for another child's medical records. Mm -hmm. You've got to be, I see too many disruptions of international adoptions. To say it's easier, it's easier at the very beginning. Is it very easy at the very beginning? I would say very easy. It's expensive, more expensive and timely. But you're living with this child forever. This is a lifetime uh, but a, a, a commitment you have to this child. If you don't know that medical um, history or that information on there, you don't know what the child has been exposed to. You have to realize that you're going to go through your whole lifetime with that. Your chances of a disruption in California are very, very, and, and United States, I should say, uh, especially with lifetime, are very, very minimal because of the information we do have from a birth mom. And you're there face-to-face -face realizing we're in the same country laws. And, and if you're working, I'm going back to international, if you're working international, a country could close down in a heartbeat. You have your, you've gone to meet that child, you're all ready to go, and all of a sudden, it's disrupted. That country said, you, I'm sorry you can't take this child out of, out of the country. You're stuck with that. Um, and and you don't get your money back. Your fees no. are your fees are spent. It, it, irrevocable, which means that all the travel time, all that. You, and we have families that come to us, and they are right. they're bemoan. Uh, you know, I've spent fifty thousand dollars on international adoption. They close the country down. I can't do anything. Or they come and they say, I've got this. I went through an international adoption. I thought it'd be easier. The child arrived over here. We've, he's got severe RADS and I um, uh, detachment disorder. I can't deal with this. Can you please find another home? This is horrible for the child, first off. It's horrible for the adoptive parents, and it's awful for anybody else involved with this whole adoption. So I really tell people, you know, it may seem like international is easy when really it's not. 
Um, mm -hmm. And it's longer than just that. You, this is a child you're going to want to have forever. You're gonna, every morning you're going to wake up and feed this child, either by hand or they're, teach them how to, to feed them. And you're not going to say, gee, I wanted it easy there for that for those, those uh, you know, six months or 12 months. I wanted it easy. But now I'm having a really difficult time parenting this child because of all these medical things. Now, if you're called to take a medically fragile child, you know, um, then that may be a different, completely different situation or go internationally because you find a humanitarian type thing. You want to go into Africa or something like this where you want to adopt a child. That's completely different. But again, mm -hmm. if you're, you're wanting to adopt because you want to embrace this child as from your heart and not from your body and you want to provide this beautiful home for this child, then that's totally different too. But go into this with your eyes open and do more, and do more research on this because I see the other side of this. When, when the, the curtains are drawn, we hear about the international adoptions that go very, very bad. And you know, Marty, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. And, and that's something that Marty really addressed in, in her book, Called to Adoption, because it, it is, I think many of us have an image of going and rescuing a child. And then what we've learned from other parents who have called us you know, it, 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 you're, you're rescuing a child who often has been wounded, who often um, has never had normal bonds formed with adults or parents or foster parents or anything. And, and you feel like, you know, you can really make a difference in this child's life, but, but the child needs so much more than you were expecting because of what happened in those formative years. And are you so, willing to give up your job? This is the whole thing. I have, I have had adopted moms say, I didn't expect to have to give my job up. My marriage is now on, um, you know, we're having severe problems in our marriage. And um, because one has to get their job to stay home with a severely disabled child or this problem that they, this child that they adopted that was, you know, maybe two years old, but had all right. these problems. So again, if you're called to that, that's great. But I see too many of them calling us back later on that we're not doing these adoptions, but they're coming from other agencies saying, we can't do this. Would you please try to find another home for this child? Yeah. And so yeah. I have to be real aware. So I'm a little bit, you know, on the fence as far as barking, <laughs> barking out there about this. Well, it's, Marty, it brings, it, it just gets back to that education piece. And that's why Marty's done so much of, of, of the writing and the sharing of that information. And um, in fact, like I mentioned just a few minutes ago, um, she did uh, write a book um, that I was very blessed to, to, to uh, help her with. Um, it is entitled Called to Adoption. And we are going to give away a couple copies tonight. And I think we have our first name for who won a free autographed copy of Marty's book Called to Adoption. Kim, do you have that? Yes, we do. Um, his name is Kevin. His last name starts with a K. Kevin, please email me, Kim, at LifetimeAdoption.com with your full name, what st your, your mailing address, and then we will get that on out to you. And please include your phone number as well. Uh, that way, if uh, you know the mail is returned to us, we can give you a call and get things sorted out. Um, but my email is Kim at LifetimeAdoption.com. Kevin, please uh, give me a, a, shoot me a line there, and I will get that book out to you. Great. Great. Wonderful. That's wonderful. So um, other oh, we're going to... I know you got a lot of questions. Yes, I do. I have a lot of questions. Um, we're going to switch to um, a few here that are, that are good, a little different topic. We're worried we may be too old to adopt. What is the average age of people who adopt? Great question. Well, Kim, do you want to ask that? I'll answer that too because... Sure. Got, I, I mean, I'm happy to pipe in, but I'd like to hear from you because you're well, doing this every single day too. And you know what? It's thoughts. interesting. Because usually anyone over the age of like 25 thinks they're too old to adopt, but we've helped families even <laughs> into their early 50s. I would say the average is probably around the 30s or 40s because, Marty, as you know, a lot of life happens between, you know, getting settled down, finishing college, starting your career, buying a house, and then starting to try for a family biologically and then going through the infertility path perhaps. And then suddenly you realize this isn't happening biologically and maybe we should start looking into adoption. And oftentimes people are in their late 30s, late 40s. Many yeah. couples are meeting later in life as well. And so they already know coming into a marriage they're going to be adopting. So I'd This say, is really interesting. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. What, go ahead. No, go ahead, Mike. Well, it's interesting because I was just back in Florida checking out a Florida office and spending some time there. I spent some time with some... Um, some people, and I also spent time with my brother. My brother married later in life, and he has a younger wife. They just have an 18-month-old, and they're thinking to have another one. And he is 56 years old. And he said, "Do you think I'm crazy?" <laughs> and I said, "I said, well, the nice thing about it is, by the time you have 
the two-year-olds, when they get to be two years old they, and two of them together, they're going to start playing with each other. You know, yep. And they're going to be pals together. And I said, you definitely want to put some money aside to have some someone to come in and he help clean your house and things like that because you don't want to be doing all that. But uh, I think it's actually making me younger. But I, I wouldn't put it off and say, you know, I want to pay off the boat first. Uh, I would definitely make it a priority. If you want to adopt, uh, I would do it sooner than later and not put it off too because there's nothing worse. And especially if something happened to you health-wise and you weren't able to fulfill that part, um, that, you know, I did, some of you have heard me speak about that um, on uh, my aunt and my, uh, my grandmother had her very, very late in life and uh, she died when she was in her 20s, my, my grandmother did. And it was very sad not to have her have her mother around during that period of time. So I want to think of the children also. So uh, I don't think if you're young and you both, want to, you both want to adopt, I think it's great. Some people actually will look at us and say, can you get us a sibling group? Can you help us get a sibling group together mm -hmm. um, so we can get the whole thing? Because that's the nice thing about lifetime is that where your, your, your fee is for an adoption, not for a child. We're, not, we're, we're, we're doing an adoption, so if it's all at one time, is the same, so you can always yeah, and that goes that. and and that goes for. Um, I just want to just want to add on to that, Marty. That goes for a sibling group or for twins. That's a question we often get: is yeah. do twins cost more? And and they don't. Lifetime. If you adopt, we've had a few families adopt a sibling group of three children. If you can imagine going from zero to three, um, and it's it's been it's been a blessing. The only thing you will pay extra for is it does cost a little more on the legal end. Um, not not three times, but a little more because you are doing three separate legal adoptions. Yeah, but, there, um, at the but same it's the paperwork, time. it's the outreach, it's the work that we're doing to reach your birth mother and to service the yeah. birth mother, so uh, to take care of all her needs right. and so, uh, in that period of time. But um, but that's something again that you want to uh, to address. So I hope that helps. Yeah. That that that. Person. Yeah. Um, I wanted to. I wanted to. Well, Kim, in Kim didn't answer that. Kim, 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 I want to um, ask Kim though. You didn't tell us the age you thought. You oh, well, well, do I think it's too old? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to get that out of me, Marty. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. That was really you stupid. No, know, actually, yeah. though, that did bring to mind a question, um, Marty. I know because there are some families that maybe have called other places or maybe they saw other kinds of adoption and that they maybe maybe age was a factor that turned them away or maybe there was some other reason that they were declined and that you in your own story went through we did go through that. We lived, well, we told. did. We no, were told. No, no, no. Yeah. Well, at the time, I was 30, my husband was 40, and we were told we were too old to adopt a newborn. And um, I was overweight at the time and um, was told that I was overweight and that that would be a problem. I had a birth mom turn me down because I was overweight. And then I had a, a not, not, not but a few years later, I had a, a birth mom that chose a birth mom because she was overweight because she was lovely, fluffy mom, you know, uh, the story of Mona in my um, adoptingonline.com book. Mm -hmm. And um, so I just think that you know, you've got to just who you are and, and really be honest with yourself and what you want. But, um, but you're going to find someone that's going to say something, you know, your hair is too long, your hair is too short, uh, whatever it may be. The main thing you want to do is you want to make sure you have a good marriage. And I, no, no one's perfect. We have our good days and we have our bad days. But can you conflict resolutions together? Um, can you, are you willing to work with counseling together? Are you willing to go to conferences if you need to? Are you willing to continue having that communication? I don't care whether it's a mother-daughter relationship or a, a relationship with a coworker. You're going to have conflict at time. It's how you resolve that is the really important part. And infertility is has a high rise for people having a lot of conflict because you've got one spouse that really wants to please the other spouse and one spouse that's really wanting to have them fix it uh, or maybe the opposite is they're both trying to please each other and this is sometimes out of our own hands and this is when mm -hmm. the faith, God's faith has to go, we've got to turn it over to God and he's going to, he's going to take care of it all for us or the way it's supposed to be. So mm -hmm. um, I just feel that, you know, that has to do with maturity and that doesn't matter what age you are there. It's maturity. <laughs> so um, if you're mature at 25 or mature at um, you know, 40, 48 or 45, too, that, that yeah. uh, I think it really Right, helps. and we actually had a question follow-up to that that said, is it true that sometimes very young couples may wait longer? Um, and mm. again, going back to what you were saying, it, it really is more based on the people and not so much a birth yeah. mother always looking at, well, how old are they and qualifying them yes no. or no. 
No, and that's I really, I, it's very, very true. And I think that a lot of times you'll have a birth mom that's looking for something very specific. And that's why people will say, well, gosh, you've got such a variety of families. Do you need some more families? We have birth moms that come to us, and they'll look at our families, and they'll go, but I'm looking for someone that has ponies or has horses, that has no other children, or I want someone that has two other children. I want someone that has grandparents. I want someone that's going to be home with the child for at least a year, the first year, whether it's the father or the mother. They have particular needs, and if we don't want to lose that birth mother uh, if we don't have a selection of families in there, too. And sometimes they come to us and they'll say, you know what, I'm really not sure what I want, and they'll look through it and they'll fall in love with the family that we have. So mm -hmm. it, we mm -hmm. just want to give a nice variety. So just be yourself and, um, and just have good communication. But mm -hmm. I'm going to bring this up before even he brings it up because, uh, you know, this is a time when you're, as I just mentioned about infertility and going through adoption, marital strife is at the high, uh, high end right now. And I really encourage you to take date nights out. Um, just uh, go to you know, uh, Chapman's Five Love Languages and make sure you guys, if you haven't read the Five Love Languages, Dr. Gary Chapman, please do. It says save marriages. And the five love languages to really know how to speak your, your spouse's love language. And uh, we've even done that for the appreciation in the workforce at our office. Mm -hmm. And uh, it really helps a lot. So I want to encourage you to stay strong in your marriage because this can be a difficult time, but it's not a time that you have to feel like, oh, my gosh, this baby's going to save our marriage, make it or break it. You can make this a wonderful time if you put your mind to it and you do the steps and you don't try to take the credit for everything. Um, mm -hmm. drop, don't be so proud. Um, be humble. Um, remember the reason you fell in love with your spouse if you're, if you're married. Um, if you're single, be focused on what you can do and who other people that can be part of your life that can help be that, that, that whole family, that whole little village that comes together to help you build your family up together and, and uh, support that the birth moms can be looking for you to have. Mm -hmm. And definitely, just one thing I want to add to that, Marty, is is really um, if you're in the waiting process or maybe even just deciding and you don't have children yet, treasure this time. Work on the things you need to work on because once you have a child, your life is never the same. Your relationship is never the same. Um, you know that you're, you... It can be better, it can be richer, but you're going to have challenges together you have never faced together before. So kind of the stronger you are going in, the stronger you're going to be, you know, in, in the years to come as, as a family. Mm -hmm. And I think going to church, if you're not going to church right now, get into church. I think that's really important, too. And just uh, based on the faith, I can't believe even just, just that positive aspect has changed. I've had couples tell me that has changed within one week, has changed their relationship by them just going to church together, holding hands and walking into church together, you know. Yeah. Important. Yeah. So, okay, I'm off my soapbox for a <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's what you're here for, is your soapbox. Good. <laughs> um, what else do you have? I have a, this is a question from um, one of our contracted families about um, doing a video. Um, when we first signed up, we were told we could do a video. Um, so uh, tell me a little bit about what you think about adoptive family videos, Marty. That's something I know Libby and I talk about quite a bit. Well, I think they're fantastic, and I'll tell you what, you don't have to be, uh, you don't have to be fancy in front of the video at all. You can be something very simple. In fact, what I encourage families to do, if you're nervous and being in front of the video, is set it up ahead of time and have it rolling. And if you want to do anything else by you're making cookies, you're making bread or whatever it may be that you want to do, you're cutting the dough, I don't care if you go and get the, the frozen dough out of the, the freezer cake and, and throw the package away in the trash can and pretend like you're making cookies. So <laughs> just do something there in the kitchen that you're comfortable with or you're working in your, your, um, your garage as long as it doesn't you know, look like a total disaster. But do something natural. <laughs> if you don't feel like you're you know, comfortable just sitting there talking, then do something there, whether it be outside rolling the ball or playing with your dog and make sure that you're not mumbled, but do something that's natural that shows some action in there and who you are. Uh, and, um, and just let the, the camera roll. And look at some of these other videos of other adopted parents, and some of those you may want to say, you know what, I don't like any of them. I think I'm going to do my own. Then do it. And it only has to be a couple minutes long. In fact, I think what we were saying, two minutes long? No minutes more long. than two. No more two than minutes. two minutes. There we go. Yep. Two minutes long. And I'll, I'll tell you what, you can get some pretty cookies and say, here's my chocolate chip cookies. I hope we get to meet because I know you're going to love them, and so will your child. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it's just as simple as that. 
show some of the things that you've done. You might take me just on a tour of the house. This is the front of my house. This is the back of my house. This is who we are. And, um, you know, we love to do blank, blank, blank. And they can have photos of things that they're doing. Um, there's just a lot of ways that you can do it. But I think videos are important. And Definitely. they have shown over and over and over again birth mothers uh, are gravitating to people that have videos. And Heather, you have a story about that, too. I don't know if you shared that about that. Oh, that was just a couple weeks ago. Um, we heard from a birth mother who basically she only was clicking on, she was on her website, she was only clicking on the right. families that said they had videos. And yeah. she is actually now matched with a family that had a video. So yeah. mm -hmm. it's, um, it's, it's, it's one of those things of it doesn't cost anything extra and, um, and people ask me why would I do it and mm -hmm. the answer is why wouldn't you? It's free and yeah. it works. And so yeah. it, it really is, it's really a powerful thing. I, I have yeah. a couple more questions, Marty, that have come in that are kind of similar on that and, and maybe video is part of the answer. Um, sometimes we worry we've waited too long and we wonder if it will ever happen for us. Mm, boy, I know that's something you've, you've heard uh, before. Well, and I felt that before, believe me. Right. I, I, I would beat myself up and think, oh my gosh, I should have started last month or last year. Um, you know, I should, I should have gone through that extra infertility type thing. Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, we put this off for so very long, I'll let my fear, you know, get in the way of it all. And I really believe that, you know, it only takes one. It only takes one birth mother. And I have seen people, and it kind of comes down to your faith. You just need one birth mother. Um, and uh, that you are where you are today for a reason. Mm -hmm. And, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the God of the universe didn't come down here and make a pathway to nowhere. <laughs> That's right. And so it's really important that you remember that. And that if he's put you on this path, He's got a destination for you, and it's in his timing. And you don't mm -hmm. want to feel beating yourself up because that is not from God. And yeah. every day you look in the mirror and say, I'm getting closer and closer to being an adopted mom. I'm getting closer and closer to being a mom. And I'll tell you what, it's going to work. And you're going to days that you're not going to feel like doing that, do it anyway. Just do it anyway. And um, I, got, I, was, I was second choice. We were second choice and third choice, I would say, for at least a half a dozen adoptions. Uh, we would get phone calls and say, we have a birth mom, she's looking at four profiles, and they had chosen the other family, but you were second. And and it was just like, what had ever happened, you know? And and then I thought, am I getting too old? Or, or, you know, I just all these things came up, you know, I'm getting too many wrinkles, or I'm this or that. And you could beat yourself into a pulp. The thing is, whatever you focus on is what you're going to get more of. And I really believe in being more positive about what we're thinking about. Mm -hmm. So as you go through your adoption, surround yourself with positive people. Mm -hmm. Listen to the webinars. You know, mm -hmm. This is why we have a tremendous amount of support through Lifetime. Lifetime, on an average, has two to three times the employee support staff of any other nationwide adoption organization. Mm -hmm. You're not going to find that anyplace else. And we do that because mm -hmm. it works, because we'd rather put more of your funds back into helping support you to get you to where you want to go and your birth mothers, because if you can imagine, if you're having those fears, birth moms have their own fears too. And mm -hmm. we want to make sure that when you get that phone call, that you're pe pepped up and you're happy and you're excited about it. And you know what? Even if you get a false start, which means you talk to a birth mom and she chooses somebody else, at least she wanted to talk to you. And sometimes it doesn't even take one of those. The first one you get is the first one you match with. Sometimes it takes two or three people to talk to. And, and others will say, well, I've been there so long and other people are getting babies. Thank God they're getting babies because I would not want to be with an organization where they were not getting babies. <laughs> you know? That's they're right. Getting mat they're getting matched up with, with, uh, with birth moms. If they're getting right. babies, that means you're coming up soon too. So I hope Marty, that helps you. I know, I know well, sometimes I you share. That. I'm sorry, Heather, I'm sorry for a second. Yeah. You were bringing to mind actually a webinar we had last night, and the adopted mom actually said um, near the end, and I didn't prompt her, I promise, but um, <laughs> she just said, you know, so many times people questioned her, why did you choose a place like Lifetime? You know, they're all the way out in California. You know, you have to do everything by phone, email, online. And she said, but they're so available, and everyone there is on top of it. Mm -hmm. And she said, I never felt like we were states away. No. Mm -hmm. And in and, and today's world, we're a phone call away, and that's why you get a live person. And, uh, and I just I hear too many horror stories, and that's in Florida, too many horror stories of people thinking they're going to go locally and they haven't had a phone call from them in two years, and their money's all tied up in there, and they're getting older. Talk about guilt trips, mm -hmm. you know, um, for that. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and one of the things I wanted to add on here and, and share a story 
is, you know, Marty, you said it only takes one, and I, I love that, and that's a, that's a concept I know we all share around here, is it only takes one. I had um, our chat open the other evening, and um, I was just doing some things and had it open in case anybody came by and wanted to chat, and I had a birth mom chat with me. This was Monday night, I think. Monday, yeah, Sunday night or Monday night. She came by and chatted with me. She was looking for a Christian family who was committed to staying in touch with her. So I chatted with her a little more. Um, come to find out, she's carrying boy-girl twins. Come to find out, she's uh, having her babies next week. She's waiting to hear if she was having a, a C-section this week or next week. And you verified um, all this, too. You will ver verify yeah. everything. Well, I, I gathered the information. And um, in just two days, we got the medical records, we got everything we needed, and she is talking to a family tonight about matching. So right. here you have a family who is waiting with lifetime, who may be thinking the same thing you are. Maybe we've waited too long. Maybe it'll never happen. But they got a call today saying, we have a birth mom for you. She's having boy-girl twins, and she's going to deliver them next week. I mean... Yeah, what it, are the chances? It, and, and the thing is, that happens all the time. It does. I mean, that uh, that happens. Like scenario, scenario, different scenarios all the time are mm -hmm. happening, and you never know what's going to be. The main thing we need to do be is be ready. If you're like, uh, and I don't, I don't, I watch a little more football now, thanks God to my husband. But you know, <laughs> if, you know if you're there on the sidelines, you got to be ready to go out and play. You can't be sitting there, you know, twiddling on your your um, your computer. Your, yeah. your cell phone. You got to be ready to go. And the same thing with our with our uh, adoptive parents. You have got to be on the sidelines, ready to go. Understand the play. Understand what's going on. Be upbeat. Be ready to go. And say when the coach says, "Hey, you're in. You're going in." And yeah. and uh, however that works. And I know a bunch of you guys are probably laughing right now, but that's how I see it. <laughs> and and that I, I, we want our adoptive parents to be ready to go in to the play and to catch it right there because you never know when that's going to happen. Yeah, and, uh, absolutely. And not be on the sidelines on their cell phones. Good. Yeah. Well, and you know, Marty, that's that. Uh, one of the things I was going to mention, if you could just share share the story. We talked about doing videos and talked about doing those things. And I know sometimes we talk about updating profiles or or maybe um, sharing profiles. You know, keeping one in your car or, or doing some some extra outreach, sharing your profile on Facebook or something. Can you share a little bit about the hour a day rule you did when you were adopting? Uh, this is it's really important, and I actually do this now in other areas of my life too. Whether it's like uh, you know organizing my house or something like that, I'll take an hour and, and go do something. But um, my girlfriend and myself got together, and we would spend an hour a day focusing on our adoption. Whether it would be sending out profiles, um, you know, now it would be social media, getting on there, getting more information, networking with people. But I spent one hour. I put the timer on, so I wouldn't get obsessed with it and want to go way over. But I spent at least an hour a day working on my adoption, and then I would shut it off at that point and say, okay, I did my point. God, I've done my point. I'm leaving the rest up to you. And then it would go forth on that. And I'll tell you what, it brought back lots of, I've gotten, I, that's basically how we got started because I was getting such good feedback from my hour input, my hour dedication every day of, of this work that I was getting phone calls from other people that had babies that we weren't able to adopt, but someone else could. And that's basically how we started our support group, is that right. we were getting all these this information from that hour I was doing a day. So a lot of it is putting that time in and realizing you are doing your part. Every single day, do something close to that. You've and it can some. be... It can be reading a book. You can be reading about open adoption. Perhaps you know. Perhaps you're waiting. Um, your preferences are limited. Do a second video. Do a second yeah. video. <laughs> yeah, do a second video. Yeah. Uh, but maybe your preferences are limited to, you know, to to within your race, and you want to explore widening that up. Find somebody to talk to. Go find an adoption support group and talk to them. Um, read, explore, spend your hour on one of our webinars. I know yeah. we 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 love that. Um, yeah. It's, I mean, I would I would say prayer prayer uh, um, uh, if you're if you're Catholic, uh, go go to mass, say a prayer, light a candle. Um, if you're if you're if you've got a, a group of people that you you are adopting all together, get together, have lunch, keep it really upbeat. Say we're going to have we're going to be positive about this. We're going to be really positive about our adoptions. Um, and that's really hard too because we had friends that got together, and I know when I was having my support group for our adopted parents, we had one that. All my families were uh, matched up except for one family. And talk about feeling down in the dumps that they weren't being chosen. But it was soon after that that family got matched up and they were at the perfect little boy. In fact, I was so excited they sent me um, the uh, graduation announcement this last uh, 
oh. June when he graduated yeah. high school, which was really exciting, and yeah. um, and it was pretty exciting on that. But um, you know, so again, you don't know where that's going to be. But have people that you can go to and do a one hour a day something towards your adoption. Let me give you one more tip I like to share. Even if you do some, um, uh, what do you call those little things you do, Libby, with those little on Facebook with the nice little sayings on there? The the official the title for them is memes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> memes. I call what are they call <laughs> meme. Yes. Well, I think you should do some of those and put those on there too that you're trying to adopt. Let people know and ask and encourage them to share that too. Or go to Lifetime's site and find one you like and share it Share it on your page. That's even better. And then what happens is, if you should get a resource, uh, resource, we just recently had this, a family had a birth mom come to them, and they said, here, it's Lifetime, take care of her, process her for us, get everything going for her, make sure everything is taken care of, that she has all the resources she has, because they knew that they could do all that on their own. That's like doing your own brain surgery. So, but, you know, yeah, get one on Lifetime and share that. Share it all over the place. But let people know you're adopting, and that's really important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and we have, have a lot to choose from on, yeah. on Facebook, facebook.com slash open.adoption. You can go there and scroll through our, our page and Good. find something you like and share it. Good. Definitely. Well, and it's, about your, it's about your own website, too. So if you have, if you have a lifetime website, post the link. I, I mean, mm. it's so easy. Just post it. Make sure that it's able to be viewed publicly. Don't just choose, you know, your acquaintances or your friends or nobody else will be able to share it and, and see it. But... Um, That's great. Yeah. Post your post your own link because the other side of this, and Marty, I know you have countless stories about this, and, and Heather, you and Kim and I could probably go on too. But um, even even if a birth mother finds you, and it doesn't quite match up with the search that you're having, you know, put out there, yeah, you could help her find another family that's meant to be for her baby. And we've had families do that through lifetime, and they've called and said, you know what, we're not, we're not comfortable adopting a child of this race, but would you be able to help this birth mother? And we've been able to do that, which has been great. And I found out a woman the other day that we helped her, we, we, we swapped, basically, and she adopted a boy, and I adopted another child, and we were supposed to both have the same one, and we swapped. And so now both our kids are 27 years old. Talk about an interesting reunion. So, you know, <laughs> these are ways that we're able to help each other in, in, in situations and stay in contact with each other. A couple more questions, too, because I know we're getting to the top of the hour pretty soon. Yeah, we're going to do another giveaway here in just a minute, too. But um, um, I also, I, Heather, I know that yeah. I know we're focusing on National Adoption Awareness Month, but I also know that on top of everyone's minds right now is Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's right around the corner, and that yeah. That has often been a passion of yours, Marty, is just being able to relate to and validate some of those some of those fears or worries, just even about getting together with well-meaning family members that want to ask you all about your child-building process. Um, right. And I and, think, too, that's, yeah. and, and that can be a tough time. And, um, and I, I go into some humorous things that happened to us during the, um, you know, during New Year's and Christmas time and, you know, uh, asking, you know, you still don't have any kids or, you know, are you too good to have kids or you think it's going to ruin your figure? And I was, you know, not worried about that. Um, but people would say things uh, like that to me. And I would just, a lot of times, just laugh it off. And then I started saying things like, why do you ask? It depends on how gutsy you want to be that day, you know. <laughs> uh, if you really want to put them on the spot, why do you ask? And say, I'm just curious and say, but why? Uh, well, you know, I mean, seriously, you, you can role play with your spouse. You might really roll on the floor laughing because um, a lot of times when you just ask people specifically, why did you ask me that question? You know, it'll shut them up real fast. And, uh, and I recently had a, um, I, I'll share with you, um, I'll share with you because I know they're not on the line. Okay. I recently just had some <laughs> relatives over to my house, okay. And my, my house has a few floors. And I shut all the rooms I didn't want to have people go into. Well, I go upstairs and all the doors are propped open. And my one relative had gone in and snooped in each of the bedrooms. All the rooms. Checked out the rooms. And I was pretty upset about it. And so I went down and said, specifically, why did you go into the sewing room? And da 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 da. Oh, I was looking for you. Really? <laughs> and so, and it's like, so anyway, so I, I kind of got off on that, but I didn't get to help tell Heather that question, that, that answer, that, <laughs> that little story over the holiday. But when people do ask silly questions and things like that, and they will, and sometimes they're being really sincere, they really will, do want to know. And other times they're just being nosy, like my relative was being. Uh, what you want to basically do is. You can do it two different ways. You can ignore it, 
you can tell. Thank you so much for your prayers. Ah, your prayers are just so meaningful to us. And how are you doing with your Pekingese dog? You know, I mean, change the topic if you want to on that. And I found that I had avoided a lot of holidays because I didn't want to deal with that kind of stuff. Um, there was a time when I wasn't um, uh, I wasn't balanced enough, I guess you would say, in the uh, in, in adoption and my infertility and just feeling I I wanted it so badly, and I didn't want to have to deal with the answers and questions because I couldn't just I couldn't just call it in. I couldn't supersize it. I couldn't click a button and order it online because they didn't have it then, and uh, and I just it was very frustrating to me. So you have to decide ahead of time how you're going to answer it. We would a lot of times uh, came up with the answer that uh, people would say, "Well, haven't you figured out how to do it yet?" We'd say, "Oh, we lost that page in the book. Pass, <laughs> pass the peas, you know, pass the corn, whatever it may be." And uh, the other time is just get them involved in talking about themselves. If you don't want to talk about you, then get them involved to talk about themselves. So how have you been? And how is your garden? Did you put a winter garden in this year? And da 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 da. Are you still driving your Chrysler? And da 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 da. You know, uh, whatever it may be, and get creative with it. And I'll tell you what, it actually helped me um, mm -hmm. because I didn't want to be away from the family, and I knew soon that I too would have that child in my arms. And I knew, and I knew, and I knew that I would. And and to this day, I look back, and I still can remember the pain though. I can remember the pain of going to baby showers, going in the ladies' room and crying. I tuck my ear, my eyes out, and then dry my eyes and coming out to it because I, I still don't really like baby showers. <laughs> um, but um, but I just I found that there were times when it was just too difficult, and um, and that's just a human raw uh, emotion. And I had to get to a point that I kept keep saying that you know I know the Lord brought me this far; He's not going to let me down, and that I'm going to be a mother soon. And so I'm hoping that helps. And you know, Marty, something I'd just like to add on there very quickly is it's it's okay in this time to to seek counseling. Um, yeah. You know, there's sometimes we we are dealing with a lot more than we were expecting, and when you have a when you have a life that is different from your expectations based on something that was completely out of your control, that's an area that a lot of people can really struggle in because it's it's hard to get past that. Um, so so. Doing a little counseling sometimes helps, gives you tools to move forward and um, and and just kind of make some positive some some positive yeah. uh, choices like like and you did and, they'll, and, they'll, and exactly and they'll give you a count, good good counselor is going to give you some information on what you can say also when you're in a situation mm -hmm. like you. They'll give you some really good information. Yeah. Good well, Marty, we're gonna uh, we're gonna do a, a giveaway and then we're gonna wrap up with just a couple more very short, quick questions. So. Um, uh, Kim, do you have a name for um, our next winner of Called to Adoption? Kim? Mm -hmm. I can pull it up, Heather. Okay, so great. Pull it up. Okay, good. <laughs> Sorry, ladies, I muted myself. I was giving a great little speech there that no one heard. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, um, Beverly, last name starts with H. Please hey. email me, Kim, at LifetimeAdoption.com. Beverly H., you have one copy of Call to Adoption. Um, email me, and we can get the details sorted out so we can mail you a physical copy of Call to Adoption. Beverly yes. H., my email is Kim at LifetimeAdoption.com. If you don't have a pen handy, just call Lifetime and ask for me, and I'll uh, get your information and send it out to you. Great, great. That's super. Wonderful. Okay, um, like I say, we're going to kind of hit a couple quick questions here. Um, we are adoptive parents of a biracial 8-year-old and a Caucasian 11-month-old. We are thinking of adopting a child of color again in the 2- to 4-year-old range. Does Lifetime have situations like that? Mm -hmm. uh, Heather, you want to go ahead and address that? Sure, I'm happy to. Um, I, I think it's awesome that you want to adopt again. Um, two things you kind of mentioned there that, that I just want to flag. Usually most people will recommend that you not adopt out of order. So if your youngest is an 11-month-old and you have an 8-year-old, a lot of people will suggest you not adopt a child in the middle, even though that, that sounds like it would be, be really good. But um, a lot of social workers and counselors will, will tell a family to kind of respect that, that birth order, not just um, for your youngest, but the one you're kind of putting in the middle. However, if you do want to adopt a baby um, and a child who is um, biracial or African American, Lifetime definitely has those situations, and and I would I would encourage you to apply. We do at times have children, um, two to four, 
older, even younger. I, I know uh, we have a, an infant right now, actually, that um, is just a few days old that we just got a call on. So um, that does happen, but I probably would suggest you not, um, you, you not look specifically for um, two to four year old with a very specific, you know, biracial, especially if it's out of birth order. But definitely give us a call and talk to uh, talk to Kim. Um, Kim would be great because she's here hearing all this about about that and some other resources she can provide as well. Good. Mm -hmm. um, let's see here. Um, um, do do the families, um, the lifetime families, do you? Do, oh, this is great. This is kind of an add-on to something we talked about earlier. Does the video have to be done by a professional? No, no. Uh, I would say you don't have to have it done by a professional. If no. you're only talking two minutes long, as yeah. long as they can hear you and there's not a big plane going over the stock or the back, <laughs> the, the dog in the back aren't you know doing or like. You know, Kim has done video with me with the animals being crazy in the back behind us. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we uh, just you make sure you have well-behaved animals around you if you're going to be doing it, uh, you know, uh, amateur type thing. But um, I would say shoot a few different ones and send them over and let us decide which ones you want. Just say here's two minutes of cookies and here's two minutes of uh, working in the garden and here's two minutes of us uh, on our jet ski or whatever it may be. Maybe not just in November, but you know, uh, like that. <laughs> well, and, and just so you know, uh, Lifetime does do um, a little bit of editing for you, so you can very easily, you know, just shoot some video of you talking, then shoot some video of you on your jet skis, shoot, you know, shoot no, those things, and uh, and Heidi will go ahead and and do some editing on that for you. Mm -hmm. You might even put in uh, for some of our families. You might even put a, um, you know, some of your um, in your. Uh, I'm going to just toss this out here. You guys are probably going to go, oh, my gosh, what's the boss going to say now? Put a coupon in there in your profile for birth moms to, to receive a three dozen uh, chocolate chip cookies when they get back to you, and you'd be happy to mail them to oh. them. And oh, uh, that's just cute. put that in there. So you could have that in there and just have it in saying, you know what, uh, we'd love to meet you, and we'd love to send you a dozen uh, you know, chocolate chip cookies. So just let us know where to send them, and uh, we'll make sure that Lifetime gets them over to you. Hmm. That's really Great. cute. What about if people want to put like a few seconds of like a grandparent or an, a future auntie on their video? Is that okay too? I think it'd be great. I but I would, I, I would, I would, I focus on the family first off. Yeah. I would focus on the family mm -hmm. first. And if you have a well-behaved pet, uh, birth moms really do like pets. Right. But if your dog is, you know, like these big canines with big teeth and like a femur in its mouth, no. <laughs> <laughs> you don't look like it just ate the last baby, you know. Um, so people are we, really funny we, got a, we got another quick video question that came in. Should it be just the husband and wife, or is it okay to include our adopted daughter? Oh, and, yeah. And I'll answer it and say definitely include your adopted yeah. daughter. Yeah, definitely. Um, and um, and it's it's okay to to reference. You know, we we adopted Sarah five years ago, and 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 you know that's and let her and she can even do her own little video too, saying, sure. "I'm Sarah. I'm I am open arms and open heart for a new brother and sister. Please give us a call." Yeah. Period. Done. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Boom. That was it. That's it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. See, yeah. I want to add, these are really great tips because we do have a lot of lifetime families on here tonight, but also for those of you who maybe haven't started with Lifetime yet, maybe you're researching Lifetime, that you're also learning that this is a lot of the stuff we're doing one-on-one -on -one with you when you are in the program getting ready to present yourself to yeah. these birth mothers. But the other side of this, too, is that, I mean, all of these are really great tips for anyone because um, the ultimate goal is to just put yourself out there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think it's putting it out there too, and also the nice thing about what we're giving you, the tips we're giving you today, is we're going to support you in it. We just don't give these tips. Yes. If we're going to talk exactly. to you about sending chocolate chip cookies, we're going to work out. We have to work out the, the logistics of how that's going to happen. You know, <laughs> how are these cookies there? They're going to be soft. Yes. Yeah, it protects you. They're going to be good. They're going to be crispy. They're going to be great. And also, we want to make sure that the video is just the right video, that's right length, it's encoded properly too. You're not going to get this anyplace else. So, you know, you can go through all these little things, too, but then you've got to make sure it's on the right thing. But we've got a proven track record with our own little recipe that we use, and that's why we right. share these things, too. I agree. Any other, last question at all? I, I just love asking. Um, sorry, I, I was, I was intent on listening, and I turned away. This is the last question, and we'll try to hit it quick. It's a little longer one, but it's, it's really, really good. And that is, what are birth mothers looking for in ongoing contact? Wow. Um, 
and, you and have, have, have another hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think to, to boil it down, and, and I, I think this is a great place to end because it is National Adoption Month, and, and I think the norm today is that a woman wants to know where her child is, how her child's doing, in order to gain the peace in her heart that she made the right decision. Now, what that right. contact looks like, um, it's going to depend on the relationship that you develop with her. Most of them are requesting families that are open to visits, and that, that doesn't mean um, that they come over every Sunday. That's getting together once or twice a year in a neutral location. But I can, I can tell you the families who have been open to that, and yeah. even when they were a little nervous, but they were committed, they're going to you know, do it afraid, they have found themselves so blessed by a relationship that is so rich, not just for their child, but for them. It's a blessing they never expected, and let they me, would yeah. not have it any other way. Let me read this part, too. It was comforting to, this is for about birth, adopted mom writing for Adoption Awareness Month. It said, we were all thankful for God that, this, that we were able to adopt this child, our child. Both we adopted, uh, both of them we adopted through lifetime adoption. And we were blessed to have them in the delivery room for both of the births following each birth. We stayed in the hospital for the majority of the time. Each birth mother was able to witness us fall in love with the baby they had just given birth to. It was comforting to them as they knew they had both made the best decision for their baby and that both their, their children would grow up surrounded by love from our whole entire family. We will and will be forever, forever grateful for the brave decision that these two women made to entrust their precious angels onto us to raise them for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And the thing and is, I also, well, I, I was going to add to that, Marty. We actually had a really great comment come in from one of our attendees just tonight that said, um, and I, hope, I don't think she'll mind me sharing here, she just said, when I first heard about open adoption, an adoptive mom said her baby's birth mom was like a sister to her. I thought of that close relationship with a birth mom, and it's, and it scared me. However, after hearing so many wonderful stories on webinars, I have grown to think it would be nice to have such a relationship with the birth mother. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it really is about hearing this and understanding what it really is like and not just going off that yeah. fear. And there what is a really, go ahead. There's a great webinar we had. Um, well, I think it was awesome, and I wasn't co-hosting it, so I can say it was awesome and toot their <laughs> horns for them. <laughs> Heather and Lovey did a wonderful webinar on open adoption. It was about 90 minutes long. If you didn't attend or haven't heard the recording, please email me, and I will send you the recording uh, or the link to that hidden, uh, that uh, we have it on a hidden page just for, um, you know, if you are interested in learning more about open adoption. So I will send you the link. Um, just email me, Kim, at Lifetime Adoption com and request the open adoption webinar link and I will send that right over to you and that's one of the things Marty that that you say that I think is so powerful in explaining the potential of this relationship and that is that it is about more people to love our children right you can never have enough people love your kids and that's the whole thing and it's not a threat I, I learned after ed educating myself and learning more about this reading and getting to know people that you can't have enough people love your children. And my, my kids will tell you now, they know who their mom is. I'm their mother. <laughs> I'm the one that was there during the poopy diapers and the spit up and everything else. But they know that they have <laughs> biological roots too. But it's really important that you realize that in yourself ahead of time before you adopt is that you are going to be the mom. You're going to be the dad. And if it wasn't for these birth parents, we wouldn't be mommies and daddies. And yeah. so it's a bittersweet type thing because of their pain. They're giving a sacrifice up to us, and we're getting this joy for a lifetime. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, and that's a. I think that's a. I think that's a wonderful place to close. And I want to thank you, Marty, for for being with us tonight, for sharing sorry, part of your story, certainly sharing your wisdom and your your experience in uh, in starting Lifetime in in 1986. I mean, it's uh, not much longer, and we'll be celebrating 30 years of um, of really uh, a lifetime adoption. I mean, that's we're going to be middle aged. <laughs> no, no, I'm staying young. We have way too many more babies to find families for. Uh, so well, well, I want to thank you so much. Enjoyed it, and you guys are wonderful. Wow, what a team! Well, I want to wow. thank everyone who's dialed in tonight and submitted questions, and and we got far more questions than we were able to answer. But I think Kim and and Libby got to most of them with you in chat, and. Um, and we just we really appreciate you coming. We love your participation. Um, Libby does just a fantastic job 
putting these on. If you are not a contracted family, please know that Lifetime has two webinars like this every month specifically and exclusively for our contracted families. So it's a great way to learn. It's a great way to interact with us and get more um, more support, uh, get more information, and um, and really just just be more prepared for the day when when you get that call that that says you know I have I have a birth mother who wants to speak with you. So um, thank you, ladies, for putting this all together. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, God bless you. Have a great night. I look forward to hearing. Good night, all night everyone. Good night. Bye bye. Good night, everyone.